Greetings, Corpse Clubbers, and welcome to a brand new episode of Corpse Club, the official podcast for DailyDead.com. My name is Heather Wixon, and I am thrilled to be joined once again. I could not resist to bring her back. I think you were on last month, if I'm not mistaken, or I don't know, time is a construct. That could have been six months ago, but I'm pretty sure it was pretty recently. Um, but I'm once again joined by uh, uh, Emily Von Sela. I'm good. I, I, I'm getting better at it, right? You it are almost, so perfect. That was okay. totally good. I love it. I really it. want to just roll off the tongue. So I'm really, I'm, I'm like, I practiced before we, we started talking <laughs> even. So, and I love the fact that it's something in our house that we joke about a lot too. So, <laughs> so anyway, Emily is back this week um, and we thought we would have a little fun and revisit Tyler McIntyre's 2017 horror comedy, Tragedy Girls. Because I think this came up before Corpse Club sort of came about. So I don't, I don't feel like we've covered this one all that much on Corpse Club. Um, of course, right now I'll probably go and do a search and be like, hey, we did like 10 episodes, but no, we didn't. Well, then you need one more because you can't have too much Tragedy Girls. Everyone should see it at least 30 times. And it's my goal to make sure that that happens. Yes. So if, 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 you, if you need a reminder to watch Tragedy Girls, if you somehow haven't watched it yet, we are here to give you that reminder. And it also is still streaming on Hulu. Um, so if you have, if by any chance you're listening to this and you haven't watched it yet, pause, go watch it on Hulu and come back and listen to the episode. Um, because obviously we're going to get into some spoilers. Um, but yeah, it's, it was one of these things where I actually did a double take when I realized that this came out in 2017, because I was like, there's no way that this movie was four years ago now. It doesn't feel like it. It's crazy because it just, it feels so current still. And it, you know, four years isn't enough time that something should feel old, but sometimes it can. Like in our fast paced world, things get dated faster than they used to. But this is a film that just, I love it so much. It's it's really interesting. We're going to talk about this. A little bit. It's, I, so I've always loved Tragedy Girls and I still love Tragedy Girls. But I find I found myself kind of a little more conflicted this time watching it. Really? Um, which we'll get into um, in terms of the finale. And maybe it's just because I'm like an emotional sap these days. But there's there's something that makes me a little sad about the ending now. And I don't know, it's because I've lost my my hate the world edge a little bit now that we've all been sort of dealing with a pandemic for a year. But there's something that like, when I got to the final moments and I still, I absolutely still love Alexandra Ship and Brianna Hildebrand in this. Um, Michaela and Sadie are amazing, but I actually, this time, and it's never really happened before when they uh, hang Jordan at the end, I got really sad about it. Did you? I did. And it's weird because that's never really happened to me before where I was just like this kid, you know, really likes this girl and he's doing his best and he's and inherently he hasn't really done anything wrong except just be a guy who likes a girl and then in this moment like he ends up getting killed for it and then before that adding insult to injury finds out that these girls killed his mom of like it's really messed up. <laughs> it really is. And then when you add on to that, the scene later where his dad, who's also the sheriff, comes to um, investigate because by this time the school is on fire and you see his anguish when oh, he realizes. My son inside, is my son in there? Yeah. 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 I get it. I get it. It's a really, really hard scene to watch. Um, I think, I, think I, I turn into a softie. I don't know what happened to me. I think it's good, though, because I think that it's one of the reasons the film works so well is because we've kind of been on this. I don't want to call this movie wacky, but we've been, you know, kind of on this crazy ride with these girls as they've become kind of serial killers in training. But then with Jordan's death, it brings us back to the reality that, yeah, these girls, we love them. They're great characters. We've loved spending time with them. They're still murderers. They're still kind of psychotic, right? Yeah. And what they're doing is not good. Like we've been siding with them the whole time because we love them. But like, should we be? Yeah, I think it's, it's interesting. I think now in retrospect, it really made me sort of take a moment and be like, why? 
why, why do you relish the violence as much as we do? And maybe that's good. Like me, that's what I think good art does. It makes you challenge yourself and challenge the things that you think. Cause like, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, yeah, like kill that lame boyfriend guy. Like, you know, and maybe it's because Jack Quaid has also sort of become something more to a lot of people over the last few years. Um, just because he's, his career has kind of, uh, grown a lot over the last few years as well but like I just I remember just sort of being in that moment last night and being like boy I am not I'm not reveling in this like the way that I used to um and I think it brings up a really interesting point like can like how does art change for you over time because Mm, there's like movies that like I loved as a kid but they mean something really different to me now as an adult and I think this is one of the first sort of quote unquote modern horror movies for me that it's changed a little bit for me, but it's good. It's not that I don't like it. I love it still. Um, and I still absolutely am on team, you know, Michaela and Sadie, but like, it's just really interesting to me that this is sort of the first time in a, with a movie that's come out in like the last decade where I've had to like sit down and really contemplate my feelings about it. Um, and what it says about me and what it says about society. Yeah, I think that's a good thing too. Like just going back to, you know, what art does for us as humans and what it reflects, that reflection can change. It can change depending on the time we're living in, the events that are going on around us. And it can just change because we're getting older and our our perspectives are different. Definitely. Um, I didn't mean to even start us off with like such a serious note, but I was like, <laughs> I was just one of those things where I was like, boy, like that was like a little harder to watch than I was expecting. Um, but I, it, that being said, I think there, there's still so much great comedy in this movie. Um, there's a lot of physical comedy. There's a lot of just sort of really great back and forth dialogue um, that happens, <laughs> especially with, you know, with Michaela and Sadie. Um, oh my God. Every line that comes out of a- Alexandra Ship's mouth is golden and my favorite thing ever. Her delivery is the best. Yeah. It's interesting because I remember the first time I saw it, like I, I absolutely was like on team Sadie because like, I just, I really like Brianna Hildebrand. I like, I really like her in the uh, Deadpool movies as well. And so I was always sort of like, I sort of favored Sadie. And then the, the more that, <laughs> yeah. And the more that I watched it, I realized that Michaela is really sort of the stealth MVP of the movie. Uh, <laughs> and and, and Al, what Alexandra is able to do with this, with her character in this movie, she's really sort of this, this force that you don't even realize especially the first time you watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, just what exactly she's doing with this character. And I think once you watch it a few times, you realize like, oh, she is, she's doing the work here. Not that Brianna wasn't at all, but like it really, if you really sort of look at it, it really is kind of Michaela's story in a lot of ways. Yeah, when you look at the characters, like their arcs are very different from one another. So I really love the fact that the actress's approach to playing those characters is so starkly different because we get to see kind of that push and pull and that difference as they start to grow apart through the movie. Definitely. Um, And another thing that sort of really stuck out to me, which um, I know this is something we talked about Tragedy Girls years ago for um, Dead Ringers. And it wasn't something I brought up then, but it kind of made me realize like one of the things that I really, really appreciated about this um, is that it normalized people who lived in trailer parks. Yeah. Very sneakily. Because like I, you know, I'm a kid who grew up in a trailer park and we used to get bussed into like the expensive neighborhood schools and stuff like that. And we're meant, we were made to feel like we were lucky to be there. And there was parents who wanted to like rezone us so we didn't have to go to their school because why should we live in a trailer? Um, And so there's always like these preconceptions about people who live in trailers. And I really feel like Sadie just being sort of just you're like your average teenager besides the psychopathic tendencies or psychotic tendencies. Like she dresses normal. She's taught, you know, she has a normal home life. You know, she's sort of the antithesis of like, say like Nancy and the craft. We're like beyond the fact that she kills people or accidentally kills people or wants to kill people. Um, she's just a regular teenager who just happens to live in a trailer. And I also love the fact that in no point in the movie does Michaela ever really hold it over her, like 
her her wealth and her own sense of privilege, mm-hmm. uh, which would have been easy to do. And believe me, because I've experienced that um, myself. And so I just I really like the fact that like in a very very subtle way, uh, Tyler McIntyre was able to sort of normalize kids who don't come from like wealth, like they're just normal kids who live in a trailer. Um, it just, I don't know, it just kind of like brought me back to my childhood because like a lot of us, like, you know, we didn't have, we didn't all have expensive clothes, but sometimes we did. Like I had friends who lived in the trailer park and like their parents always bought them Nikes and stuff like that, you know, and it was just a sense of just, you know, it was just geography basically. Um, and you know, it just, it felt really normal. And I was like, wow, I wish more people did that because every time you see trailer park people in movies like there's always this preconceived notion that we're just we're uneducated we're like dirty you know we have (laughs) you know we can't dress ourselves or you know and there are people who are like that but like I think uh Sadie is sort of the what I what I remember my experience being like just being like hey that was just life you know yeah this is just where she lives and this is just you know the the spot that she occupies. Yeah. So I, again, I just, I like the fact that it wasn't ever like a point where like Michaela, you know, cause who obviously was living in a, a very, uh, you know, huge house, everything was very well maintained, like expensive clothing and furnishings and things like that. But that was never like a point of discourse between them. Like mm-hmm. it, it was never, that was never a thing. So that was one of the things that really kind of stuck out to me this time. Um, I was like, Hey, she's just a normal person from a trailer park. They, they, we can actually do that in movies. It's so weird. (laughs) Why has nobody thought of this before? I mean, except for last starfighter. Those are like the two that I can think of where it was like, it was like, just okay. That people lived in trailer parks. Like it was just fine. It wasn't a big thing. Meanwhile, every other movie is like, you know, everyone's missing teeth and, you know, wearing, Whole, holy underwear out in the streets and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. There's those people. <laughs> <laughs> they live there. But, you know, for the most part, it's just normal people just trying to get by. So, yeah. So, yeah. so that was one of the things that like sort of stuck out to me this time. Um, but I was curious because like, I don't know if it's because I'm coming up on like, uh, and I hate to say this because it, boy, it makes me feel really old, but I'm coming up on like my 25th anniversary of my high school graduation this year. So I think just having that coinciding with rewatching this really like took me back to high school. But I was curious, like when you watch this, does this sort of give you like high school flashbacks or have you sort of removed yourself from that? Um, I think more removed. Like I, I recognize their high school experience and that, you know, resonates with me as something familiar. But when I watch the movie, I don't find myself living in that space. It's just kind of more I'm observing it through them. Um, And I've never attended any of my high school reunions. So (laughs) I don't know what that's like. I actually actually ran my 10th 10th high school reunion. No way. Was it, what was it like? uh, It was weird because it was kind of like, right before Facebook sort of took off. So, cause like Facebook has kind of rendered these things sort of moot at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're in a pandemic. So like, I don't even know if they're going to do anything for our 25th. Like, are we all going to be on zoom? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Cause like, I remember like, um, cause originally there was like a, a group of us and our class president was sort of in charge and he kind of, we, we had a space that we were going to rent and he was sort of on the fence and like, it ended up, we ended up losing the space. And it was just like one of these situations where he wasn't making decisions fast enough for us to be able to like get everything organized and get people aware of what was going on. So we, somehow I ended up like getting sort of pushed to, towards the head of all of it, which was crazy. So we ended up having ours. Um, I don't know. Do you guys have rock bottoms? Are you no uh-uh. it's, like a, it's like a brewery restaurant so we yeah we because like we have a couple out here like they're uh like out in like the orange county long beach areas and things like that so we don't have them in la proper um but we had a couple like out in chicago and so we basically just like rented out like the top floor of like rock bottom and just had like a bunch of brews and like uh 
like finger foods and stuff like that. Nice. But it was really weird because like a lot of the people like I just hadn't seen in like 10 years. And then there's like a lot of people who I had because it's weird. A lot of the people I went to high school with really didn't move out of the area. Like everybody still kind of knew each other and kind of hung out and stuff. Weird. Yeah. And also what's really crazy is in my high school class, a ton of us got married to other people that we graduated with. Like, I think there was like 10 or 12 couples. Ah, also weird. Yeah. I was one of them too, because I ended up marrying my high school sweetheart. Um, And, and, you know, for anybody listening, we've since divorced and that was fine. Um, But it was weird because like there was, there was a ton of us and a bunch of people who got together after high school. Why? Which is so oh. I know, which is so strange to me because just to be clear, this is coming from the perspective of I have one friend from high school that I have kept in touch with. That's all, and like everyone else, like I maybe kept in touch with for a couple of years through college, and they just you know nothing ended ended badly. We just the relationships kind of fizzled because you move on and do other stuff. So the idea of everyone still hanging out with everyone is so foreign to me. Yeah, well, it was weird because like when I did end up um, deciding to divorce my ex, um, a lot of people kind of cut me out because it was like weird. And I was just like, wait, okay." I mean, it was fine. And I still talked to a few people um, that I went to high school with. But a lot of people just sort of just like moved away from me because like my priorities changed and who I was changed. And it wasn't because it was because I shouldn't say who I was changed who I was pretending to be changed. Um, Mm -hmm. And so once I sort of just kind of was being being myself, I just didn't really sort of measure up with their ideals, I guess is the best way to put it. So it was a really weird time because like our 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 first high school reunion was like 2006. And then I filed for divorce in 2008. And in like that, that two year span, it was like, I went from like talking to a bunch of people I went to high school with to like literally maybe talking to two or three people still. So oh, it was that sounds very, weird. Yeah, it was very, very odd. Um, and yeah, and it was just one of those things like, cause like I was like, when we watched, I was watching the prom scene last night and it was like bringing up like all my prom memories and stuff like that. Did you do prom? No, I didn't go to prom. Are you serious? Oh yeah, my I gosh, we prom. need to throw you a prom. <laughs> we need to do horror prom. Like, we need to do, a, I, I think in general, we need to do a big horror prom at like whatever next big film festival there is. Cause I feel like we just, Oh, that I'm down like for. <laughs> yeah. Like fantastic fest. If you're listening next time you guys are able to like, we can all go and be together. Let's do horror prom. And you know, oh, we, we can dress up so pretty and creepy. I know. Like I, you know, if somebody wants to dress like Carrie covered in blood, like that's cool. Like I, you know, let's do this. Um, but it was funny because like it made me think of like prom because like my my senior prom was fine it was normal um, because I went with my ex-husband and you know it was all fine but I actually it totally reminded me of like my sophomore year I went with a friend of mine to his senior prom and I just went as friends like he because I I worked at a convenience store that was like right down the street from where he lived so I would see him all the time and you know we went to school together and stuff and he asked me to go and I had recently um, had gotten out of a really bad relationship um, with this guy who ended up like stalking me for a few months and I was just kind of needed like the change of pace a little bit so I was like yeah sure and I had a I you know I had a dress that I had worn to a previous dance I was like that's fine and I had a friend's mom who would do my hair that's fine so I was like sure you know I'll do it and it was weird because like I went to his house for us to leave for his prom and actually one of the friends of my ex, I didn't realize lived in like the same little cul-de-sac as him. So they were all there. It's like, I was leaving for prom, which was weird and not scary. Yeah. So that was a little weird. So it was just, it literally was like one of the stupidest nights of my life because we, (laughs) and I'm I'm telling the story because it's like, it's not, I can't even share it on Twitter because it just doesn't even like, I would need like 45 tweets, but like, basically we go to prom and we're having a fine time. But I'm not there romantically. I'm just there as a friend. And I had other friends who were there too. Uh, Like one of my best friends in high school was this guy named Larry. And his girlfriend at the time was older. So he was there with her. So I was hanging out with them because I was like part of the theater kids group. And Todd, the guy that I was with, like he wasn't really much of a dancer. He would slow dance, but he wouldn't like, you know, do other stuff or whatever. So whenever 
like my friends would be on the dance floor, like I would go out there because they'd be like, oh, come join us. And I'm sure, you know, and I guess Todd got pissed off. And so he was basically, he basically ended up leaving me at his own prom. What? Yeah, this isn't even, that's not even the worst part of it. So I was like, so basically like I realized at a certain point of the night, I was like, oh, he left. Okay. I mean, now I'm stuck at this like hotel with no car because he drove. And I was like, what am I going to do? So all my friends were like, oh, just come out and hang out with us because they're theater kids. So eventually we're going to go to Denny's, right? <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> of course, because that's what you do when you're theater kids. Um, and as we were getting ready to leave, he came back. Oh, and I should have just been like, no, you left. I'm leaving. I'm going. But I was like, well, no, I owe it to him. I was his date. I should just honor the date. So he was like, well, let's go get some dinner because we didn't even eat beforehand. So now it's like 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, okay, like, I don't really know what's, what's open. So we drove into downtown Chicago and I'll never forget. Everything's closed because it's not like, it's not like New Orleans or something like that where like everything's open like all hours. So like, we're just driving around and he's lost. And it's now it's like after midnight. And basically like at one point he tur like turned down a street and ended up getting his car, which was like a little Ford Escort hatchback wagon thingy stuck on a median. <laughs> so I then have to get out of the car so we can try to like push his car off the median. And I was like, I can't even believe this is happening. So finally I was like, you have to take me home because it was a, it was a year that we had a bunch of snowstorms um, in Chicago and they had, we had school canceled a lot that year. So we had, they ended up having to move our finals back like a week and a half, which meant normally prom for us would happen after finals. Well, prom night was like, like Wednesday night. And I had to go Thursday for finals at 8 AM. So now I'm like, holy shit. Like it's one 30 in the morning. We're still downtown. My mom is probably pissed at me because I should have been home already. And I haven't eaten either this entire night. So I was like, just take me home. And I literally got home at like 2.30 and got back up at seven. And I'm like, my, I went to school with my hair still done from prom to go do finals. <laughs> I was so exhausted and so pissed. It was just the most like catastrophically stupid night I've ever had. Dude, Todd is the worst prom date ever. I, <laughs> I hope know. he's listening to this so I can tell him that he is the worst. I felt so bad. And then I remember like a couple weeks later, like he came in because I worked at a White Hen Pantry, which was like a, a chain of convenience stores in the Midwest. And he came in like a few weeks later with the pictures because, you know, you take your pictures <laughs> And sneakily, because I was like, well, I'm not going to put a picture of us up. So I was like, oh, you know, we should do the picture together and then we'll do separate portraits, right? So I think I, I still have like the, the portrait of just me mostly, but like, yeah, I, he came in with the pictures. I was like, oh, great. I'll treasure these forever. <laughs> so yeah, that was like the most, it, like, it wasn't as bad as a school starting on fire and everybody dying, but it was up there. It's totally up there. It's like coming in <laughs> second or third. And I it kind of makes me wonder, like, does anyone have a good prom? Does anyone yeah. have like the storybook dream that they had been anticipating? Because I'm going to guess not. I mean, I'm admittedly, prom is just a letdown no matter who you are. Yeah. I mean, admittedly, my senior prom was actually pretty great um, because like it was, just, I was still like, all swept up in the romance because like my my ex and I we just started dating so we'd only been dating for a few months and uh admittedly he was like hot and you know all the chicks kind of like wanted him and stuff and he was <laughs> smart um and it was like it was a really good time because like I got to hang out it was like all my friends and like there was like one of the first years where they didn't have juniors and seniors at the same prom so it was specifically just for us seniors and I do remember that being a really good night. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it though. Um, Wait, does that mean that if you were a senior, you could take a junior or was it yeah, just, well, nope? Well, they used to do like years prior, they would have the junior class be part of the senior prom also. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they were like, well, no, seniors should just get their own prom and juniors get their own prom. So they threw two proms? Yeah, or something like that. I'm trying to remember how it worked. Cause I remember my junior year, I wanted to go with, a, I, I wanted to go. Um, so I asked my friend and he said no, because he was like totally in love with my one of my friends, which is fine. I just wanted to go with him as friends because I, I just figured we'd have fun. Um, 
but I think they eventually separated it out. So there was like, yeah, you would get two proms. So I didn't wow. go to my junior prom, but I did go to my senior. So, which was fun. It was a really good time. Like I, I still look at that. And I was like, oh, I actually had a good, I had a good time. So oh, I'm so happy for you. Yeah. But it was mostly like just being able to like hang out with friends and stuff. Cause like, again, like a lot of the, like, I, I was really like tuned in with like the theater groups and stuff like that. So, you know, we were all obnoxiously goofy that <laughs> night. And well, stuff I'm glad like the that. gym didn't burn down. No, we were actually at a hotel too. So that I'm that glad was... that didn't burn down either. Yeah. <laughs> So and it's crazy because again when I was watching that the 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 prom scene for this, like I was it's you know obviously there's a symbolism of the the Titanic sinking on the the tarp which I just <laughs> love that image and then it's like burning up, um, and it's so crazy to me like like I get that it's like a dark comedy and I don't necessarily need my horror movies to be super realistic for me to 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 fall in love with them but I'm just like. So everybody else but these two girls die and nobody, nobody thinks that's suspicious. <laughs> like at all. Like they're not even singed. Like they still look perfect at the end of that movie. And I was just like, wow, all right. I mean, I, you know, I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, I feel like I might have opened an investigation into those two young ladies, perhaps. <laughs> You know, just saying. It's just, just an feels, idea. I mean, maybe that's why the sheriff needed to resign because he really wasn't doing it right. That's true. Maybe they needed to bring somebody else in and just the timing was off. Maybe that's going to happen in the sequel. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of like, I, I'm so bummed that we haven't had a sequel. I mean, obviously both Brianna and Alexandra have sort of gone bigger in their careers um, in terms of, because I think like, it was Alexandra, she did like X-Men stuff, right? Yeah, she was Storm in whatever X-Men movies those were that I didn't watch. You know, the ones that I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. So they could be very good and I just really wouldn't know it. Um, I mean, I remember her, she was, I remember Alexandra popped up in Straight Outta Compton, but that was before this too, which is interesting. Yeah. Which again, as soon as I realized that that was earlier than this, then I felt even older because I was like, oh my God, what has happened to like the last eight years of my life? <laughs> Time means nothing. It, it means absolutely nothing. Um, I feel like they both come back though. They seem to have a really good time working on this. At least that's kind of what their performances tell me. So I'd like to believe it's true. Yeah, I would think so too. And I, I would really love to sort of see how they would have navigated college. Like give me something where they're getting ready to graduate college. Yeah. And they want to like they want to cap off their graduation with like a killing spree because that's, you know, how you, you should. Right. You know, that's that's basically now that I'm back in school, like that's how I'm going to finish off. Hells yeah. I would oh, expect I, nothing less. Yeah, I've got three. I've got like three years to plan. I'm good. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> because you need the planning time because it's all about the details. It really, really is. And it, it, it shows you like if you're somebody like Kevin Duran and you're just working from the gut. You know, it doesn't work out for you in the end, so. No, you will be foiled by two teenagers. Absolutely, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just curious, like, if you were if you were to plan the sequel, what would you want to see? I think, I like what you said about as they're graduating from college, because I think here, you know, they're on the border between childhood and adulthood. They're about to go off and start to get this level of freedom that they've never had. But stepping out from college to like real adulthood is a much bigger chasm with a lot more factors playing in. So I would like to see them as they're about to take that step and really go into the real world. And I think that that would provide a lot of a lot of interesting backdrop for whatever whatever killing spree they decide to plan next <laughs> yeah because I think it would bring a lot of conflict for those characters because goddamn that was scary for me yeah and it's interesting too because you know there's there's a lot of this movie that very much is a statement you know of course on social media you know and how we treat it and sort of these online personas that we build but it also very much is about sort of that high school experience of like trying to fit in figure out where you know what your place is what you want to sort of quote unquote be um and I'm really curious to see what sort of dynamic would be explored you know once you kind of get out of all of these years of school that have really given you sort of a structure to establish an identity and you're sort of tossed out into the real world and you have to kind of start over in a lot of ways yeah 
Yeah, but you have more freedom to do what you want because high school, you know, it's a formative experience and there's a lot of important, you know, rites of passage and a lot of important memories that go on with that. But at the same time, your experience is kind of structured around this fishbowl where like you're friends with the people you're friends with because you've hung out together every day for the past eight years. Yeah. You know, like you don't have a whole lot of new dynamics or new relationships coming into that mix because everything is the same. Yeah. And it's interesting because you mentioned like how you sort of kind of grew away from people that you had been friends with in high school and stuff like that. Like, I'm curious to see what the dynamic would be, you know, as Michaela and Sadie get older and like, are they still as tight as they've always been? Or, you know, is there, are they going to sort of move in opposite directions? I mean, I know they sort of toy with that idea here in the movie, but it's in a, it's sort of in a contained way. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, once you kind of graduate and you step out into the real world, they, like, there's really not a box to keep you in there. Yeah. I'm going to predict that they do stay tight because one of the things I love so much about this movie is that relationship that they have with one another. Um I think it's interesting because um, I was listening to a while back Horror Queers did an episode on this movie and they looked at the idea that this could be read as a potentially um, gay relationship, especially with the way Michaela starts to get jealous of Sadie and all of the time that she's spending with Jordan. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's a really valid read. And I think it's definitely there if you um, pick up on that. But for me, I think that the beauty of their relationship is that I read it as them being platonic friends and they are the most important person in each other's lives. I feel like these characters could go on and they could date and they could, you know, take lovers and even marry, but those partners are always going to be secondary to each other because the relationship they have with one another is the relationship that defines them because they found this person who understands them better than anyone else in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I, it it is one of those things where like, when you go back and watch it, like it definitely, you know, that interpretation, especially from the the point of view of Michaela, I, I think is actually pretty spot on where, you, you know, although she's she's caught up on Toby, but she I think she's more caught up on the idea of Toby in a lot of ways. I think everybody's caught up on the idea of Toby. Oh, but I'm definitely <laughs> caught up on the idea of Toby. I just wonder if Josh Hutcherson has been able to sort of really grow facial hair since then. <laughs> he was working at it so hard there. He was really trying. God bless we're him. Poking through. They were they were they were trying. It's like that like you know that weird sort of patchy where you just like like patchy like hair growth where like. You just know that he's not a kid who grew up like just shaving every day just to get his follicles ready. <laughs> so he's doing the best he can. God bless him. But, you know, it's 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 still uh, it, it still leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, but, yeah, like. Again, it's one of those things where, like, you almost feel like she's more caught up in sort of what Toby represents and really who Toby is, because if she really cared about who Toby was, like killing him wouldn't have been as easy. Yeah. Um, and she also admitted like something about like how the motorcycle just made him all that co- all the much cooler or whatever. <laughs> um, you know, and she's not wrong. You know, no, no. Motorcycles make everybody cooler. So right. I get it. Um, but yeah, it's it's very interesting when you sort of look at it from that that respect um, in terms of, you know, what their relationship really is. And maybe that's something that does get ex- would get explored in a sequel which I would be totally down for. Cause I think there is a moment where I think Michaela has to be able to sort of confront her feelings because they're there. Like I, I know Sadie's obviously devoted, but we, we saw in a specifically, like she is still willing to go through the motions where she's still sort of trying to find her footing. Mm-hmm. So it'd be really interesting to sort of have that confrontation and really kind of figure out, you know, who these women are to each other and sort of, ultimately what they are to themselves yeah and I think that continuing to explore that connection that they have that's at the heart of that there's just there's so much potential there and I love them so much yes uh me too I do too they're so cool they are although I don't I are they as cool as Craig Robinson oh that's hard (laughs) it is so funny because like 
Okay, so like I totally have always crushed on Craig Robinson. I don't know what it is, but like just the way he talks or like his sort of like calm, cool delivery. I don't know, but there's just something about him that I've always kind of had like this like sort of inherent little crush on. So I get the fascination with Big Al in this movie. Because even <laughs> even them, they're both like, oh, he's so sexy. And you're he's just so like, hot. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like, oh yeah, okay, I get it. Um, and I remember they actually did a Tragedy Girls screening here in LA um, and I got to do the Q&A with Craig. And I was like, I I was nervous. Like I was panicked and then also a little uh a little what do you call it um oh my goodness I can't believe I can't think of the word it's been a long week folks for those who are listening sorry um but I, I got a little schwitzy where you know I was like you know the the gif of Blanche doing the water bottle oh <laughs> I had a little bit of the vapors because I was like I stand next to Craig Robinson and everything and then afterwards he's like oh do you want to do a photo and I was like yes yes, yes I do please. um but he, even though his, his character is, you know, isn't a big, a huge focal point in the movie, um, he's, he's so fun in this movie. <laughs> and I just, I love the one thing that I, I guess I always forget too, like the scene when they're doing the, uh, the march, the Remember Al march. Mm-hmm. I always forget that they had all these big cardboard cutouts of, of Craig Robinson's face. <laughs> his face is just up there on sticks along with the signs and it's amazing like I love that and I just it's one of those things like every time I watch this and then I re-see that scene I'm like oh my god that is amazing and also why didn't they just send out for publicity like Craig Robinson on a stick do you think the extras took those home I oh, bet they totally did. I bet I they're in have. everybody's bedroom oh my god like, they better he's be. in the corner just watching over you as you sleep <laughs> One of my favorite things was they did a, an early sneak preview screening for being John Malkovich in Chicago in the 90s. And they gave everybody a, a paper John Malkovich mask to wear. That's amazing. So some years it was actually my tree topper on my tree <laughs> at Christmas. And a lot of times I used to have like this like square window that was like in the front door of my apartment, of, of the, the, the floor of the house that I used to rent. And so I would stick it in there because it would scare the shit out of people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure my mailman loved me. Um, he probably got used to it, but if anybody took his route that day, I'm sure they were like, what the hell? Um, so I would have absolutely been down with receiving a Craig Robinson face on a stick. And I'm just sad that we didn't get that. <laughs> Oh my God. If we have a sequel, we need to demand it. Like, yes. even though Big Al is dead, that should not negate the Craig Robinson head on sticks. No, we, we, because we have to remember Al. Yeah. It's kind of the focal point of the entire second half of the movie. It is. It, it really <laughs> is. So, and I love um, the mayor's kill too, because obviously that's such a cannibal Holocaust. Oh my throwback. God. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what I think is really great about Tragedy Girls is that it, it very much, you know, gives you all the stuff that you love about slashers and it tips its hat to a lot of them. Um, but it also feels like a love letter in a lot of ways to, to just horror in general, because you have like the image of the hands on the doors, which is sort of very Dawn of the Dead. Um during the prom fire and then of course prom fire of course evo- you know evokes that imagery of carrie um you know and then you get a little cannibal holocaust thrown in there so it's just really interesting to me that like it's not just about slashers like it really is sort of the celebration of what we love about horror in general yeah there's so much love that clearly went into making it and celebrating the genre as a whole absolutely did you have you ever seen patchwork from tyler yes oh my I God. still haven't made time for it but everybody says it's fantastic so it's great yeah it's so fun it's not quite as polished as tragedy girls because it's just you know an earlier feature with a lower budget but it's a lot of fun and you can see the humor coming from the same the same place interesting so is i wonder if that's still streaming on because i know for a long time it was on netflix I think that's where I watched it, but I think that was like a year or two ago. Yeah, you know what? It's not on Netflix now, but it is on Tubi TV. Oh, nice. So for anybody listening, if you want to check out something else from the from this director, uh, Tubi is, is your place to go. So, but yeah, I remember it was on Netflix for a few years and I'm just a dumbass who just skipped it. That's the way it goes, though. There's only so many hours in a day and there's a gajillion movies. Yeah. 
I really wish, I, I'm not sure why we haven't seen more from him, to be really honest. Like, I know he did an episode of Into the Dark, um, which I think was the one, if I'm remembering this correctly, it was the one with Judy Greer. I need to get caught up on Into the Dark. I haven't watched any of them. Yeah, I I think that might have been the last one that I watched. And that was like last summer sometime. Because um, I remember the Goot was in it, Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> um, but I don't know what we need to do t- in order to give uh, Tyler more opportunities to direct. But I want yeah. him to have that. I want that too, because he brings me so much joy and he's got a great voice and a great love for the genre. So he needs to be making a lot more stuff. Yeah. So if you're out there, Tyler, if you need us to help you, you know, whatever we can do to support you, to get you out there, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, All you need to do is give us Craig Robinson face masks on sticks. Yes. And then we will do whatever we need to do to help your career. (laughs) Because we have that power, right? Right. Yeah. That's, what, you know, that's how it works. <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, we're basically like the people on the internet who are like, oh, this is how you should make a movie. Because, you know, we all know how that happens. Right. And then we say, hey, good job. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so I, I will say one of my favorite also little details um, of this movie comes through um, via uh Kevin Durant's uh, character Lowell in this because I love the fact that his initials are LOL. <laughs> and it's one of those things where like you kind of if you're not really looking for it, it sort of passed by because I don't think it hit me the first time. But I think like the second time I was like, oh, my God, that's adorable. I think you were the person who actually clued me into that when we were talking about this on Dead Ringers. And I'm like, whoa, it's that's just, amazing. It's, it's just such a funny little detail, especially when you're talking about like a movie about social media. <laughs> So like essentially he sort of becomes such a non-factor like he's supposed to be the scary killer and he just becomes sort of almost like their punchline and their scapegoat so yeah by the end he's like relegated down to dorky henchmen yeah which is very funny um and so you know it's something that makes us all lol i think (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's it it really is good stuff and i i do wish you know, I, I wish at this point we were talking about the fact that there was a sequel, because again, this is, you know, now we're talking four years ago. Um, so I'm curious, I, 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 you know, because I know there's a lot of us who are still really into this movie and for good reason, but I'm curious, like, if others feel the same, like, I feel like they would have to, at least the, 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 the smart horror fans, at least. Yeah, everyone I, who I talk to loves this movie, and that's why we're still friends with them. That's that's why they're the good people. So <laughs> I actually showed this movie to my brother and my sister-in-law a couple years ago. Um, they had just moved out to Seattle and were staying with us while they were looking for an apartment. And it was over Halloween, so I was trying to put together, like, Halloween viewing for not horror fans like people who you know will get into the holiday but like she's not very into being scared so I I suggested this and they said okay let's give that a shot and they loved it they had so much fun with it the humor was right up their alley so I think that this is one of those movies where on the surface it doesn't necessarily look like it would apply to <coughs> the outside of the genre but it really really can there's a lot of appeal to it once you get going Yeah, totally. Um, And also what I think is really fun, too, because we were talking about Jack Quaid earlier, um, is that he's in the new Scream movie. Is he really? He is. Um, I don't know much about his character, um, or at least I know a minimal amount about his character, but I can't talk about it yet. Um, Nothing that would really clue me into what his how he fits into a lot of things and where his character might go. but I think it's kind of cool because like he's really he's really clicked with a lot of people through the boys. I haven't watched that yet, but just based on this, he seems to have, you know, kind of a. I don't know, like an everyman charisma. Yes. And what's also really nice is I think he's the smartest Quaid out there. I think he is, too. He's doing he, well so far. He hasn't yeah. said anything crazy or stupid. And he's also like basically denounced most of his his dad's like views and stuff. <laughs> Bless him. Yeah. So I think he's the best Quaid. I'm going to go for it. Can we put that on a t-shirt? Yeah. The best Quaid. Jack the Quaid best is the best Quaid. Quaid. Yeah. 
So Did I'm going to go out on a limb with the scream stuff. You don't have to tell me if I'm right or wrong, if you're not allowed to divulge the secrets that you have. But is he perhaps playing Kirby's boyfriend because Kirby's totally not dead and she's going to star in the scream movie and it's going to be a surprise? Oh, I wish. I wish I knew if they were like, because like I, that, I, the Kirby thing is the one thing that like we're all just sort of like, please, please, please. please. Um, but as far as I, I, nothing that I have seen nor heard has indicated any sort of Kirby-ness. So unfortunately. I can wait until Scream 6. That's fine. Yeah. I'm patient. Personally, what I would love is if Kirby was the killer. That would be so wicked. It would be really cool because like she's just like, you know, she gets pissed off because she gets stabbed and it's like her horror knowledge should have saved her. And, and then nobody doesn't. cares afterwards because yeah. they ignore her. Yeah, they're all caught up in Jill. So I'm OK if they make her. I would love if they are able to really pull this off and make Kirby the killer in Scream 5. She would be my favorite slasher ever. Yeah, it's funny because like I know some people out there have actually read the script for Scream 5. Um, I have not. I haven't been able to sort of find that. I don't know how you do that where you just are able to find these things. But I will say and I'm, I'm on the fence about whether I still haven't read them yet but i actually have two versions of the halloween kill script <gasps> cool and i'm 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 so on the fence about whether or not i want to read them because like yeah. I wa- i'm like i want to know but i don't want to know but i want to know but then i don't want to know <laughs> so and then if you do know then how much of it gets changed right but it, it's it's fascinating because like part of me is like would i read the scream five script or can I just patiently wait out the next 11 months? <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds so long now as I say that out loud. I'm like, can I wait 11 months for Scream 5? <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't know. I'm torn. But if anybody's listening and you have the Scream 5 script and you want to slide it over to me, I am I am open for that. Just putting that out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally out there for that. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's funny. Cause like, I, again, this is, you know, I think it really does a lot of fun stuff with what we expect from slasher movies. Um, it's a very expect, unexpected ways. And there's, there's a lot of it that I really do feel like uh, there's a lot of tragedy girls that owes a lot to like Heather's, um, in a lot of ways, but I also think in a lot of ways, it owes a lot to scream, yeah. um, too, which is interesting. Cause I don't feel like a lot, like Heather's is the one that I see that sort of gets bandied about a lot. Which makes sense, because especially like even in the scene um, when the girls are going through the high school and just sort of like trying to talk to the different groups, Mm -hmm. it really reminded me of when they would do the lunchtime poll and have to like go and talk to the different groups during that. Um, But the more that I the more that I've watched this and the more that I sort of um, come back to Tragedy Girls, there's just a lot of it that really feels like sort of in the vein of Scream, um, which is fun, but just in a very different way. Yeah, and I think that's a really good connection because Scream was a movie that encouraged us to talk about horror movies differently. And I think that Tragedy Girls is kind of following along that line and taking its cues there, like being able to acknowledge the movies and how they come into play with with life and with the inspiration that these girls are taking. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's, you know, it's one of those things where like, it's, I'm always like, there's just something about a movie that acknowledges that other movies exist. Like, yeah, they don't sort of I exist in characters vacuum. that are as big a nerd as I am. Yes. Because <laughs> like, how do you not like, you know, how do you not adore a character like Sadie who has like horror posters up all over her bedroom? Yeah. Like, <laughs> or she's, you know, she wants to talk Argento or... Uh, as as Michaela calls him, Dario Arpeggio or whatever it was at one point, <laughs> which should be a T-shirt, by the way. Yes, <laughs> should figure out a way to make that. Um, we need a Dario Arpeggio T-shirt. I think that would be <laughs> fantastic. I love him. <laughs> so you know, it's 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 just nice. I, I, I think if there's one thing that us as horror fans enjoy, I think it's validating our own set, love for the genre. Yeah, I feel like when you have characters that reflect the audience, it makes you feel like you're making friends with the movie. It is like they're, they're sort of welcoming you, welcoming you into like the group, right? Yeah. <laughs> like you're part of it. Like we're all tragedy girls deep down. 
We are. Aww. Yeah, deep down, we are all we are all tragedy girls. Hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed. Like and favorite. Yes. Did you did you enjoy the fact that when I set up this call that I I used hashtag blessed for the. Uh, you have no idea how happy that made me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I saw it and I kind of squeed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because we actually we make that joke a lot in our house, you know, because, you know, people used to do that with with all of the with all the sincerity that they could muster in their lives. They would really tweet out hashtag blessed, <laughs> <laughs> which just makes me like, what? No, it should only be used as a joke. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a thing. So, um, I will say also something else that people don't really talk about too much. Um, I really, really love, uh, the soundtrack for this movie. Yes. Because it, you know, it, it does a thing where like, kind of like Heather's where they sort of have like a couple of like older songs that they sort of, you know, put a new twist on. Um, and again, it's like, maybe this is probably something I shouldn't be, uh, admitting, but I, the fact that it ends, um, that we basically get a, a Skrillex song in here. I know it's weird. <laughs> I know. I get it. Um, oh, gosh. Um, now everybody's freaking out in my house. I mentioned Skrillex. Everybody's freaking out. Um, but for me, like, I live in this lonely little world of electronic music. So there's just certain things that happen in movies where I'm like, oh, we have a song with Skrillex. I'm really excited about this. Um, also, because he hasn't put out a formal album in like forever. So um, anytime he shows up and stuff, I get really excited. But yeah, this this soundtrack is just really awesome. Um, and again, it's one of those like, have they ever, do you know if they've ever released it? I don't know, but I want it. Yeah. Well, I've actually we... never looked into that. Why don't I, why don't I have that? <laughs> yeah. Why is that a thing? Like I, it's, they have a playlist on an Apple, but like, can we just, can we get it? It's like, I want it. I want the whole thing. So, but I mean, yeah, anybody, like anytime, like a soundtrack will use MIA and uh, Skrillex, like it's, it's pretty much a top tier soundtrack for me. So <laughs> I am one of the very few people who like, there's a, there's a line in like Deadpool too, where he was like, he said something about like is is dubstep still a thing in the future while he's fighting somebody over a skrillex song um <laughs> and it was one of those moments where i was sitting with brian and we both looked at each other and we were like that joke was for us that was our moment in that moment deadpool saw us that's a beautiful thing it is it is <laughs> It really is. Um, but yeah, so anyway, if you're listening out there, Waxwork or whatever, I mean, somebody, I get it because a lot of these groups are sort of bigger, but like, I want a soundtrack. Like, I want a formal release that I can hold in my hands. So can we make that happen? I mean, I, next year's the fifth anniversary. Maybe we'll get it for that. But like, ooh, I like it. I just, I want to, I want to really, I want a real release of the soundtrack, please. Thank you, universe. <laughs> like what else you've got going on you're not releasing new soundtracks because there's nothing right so let's go back and let's talk about the ones that we missed and get on that yes i know it's like every time i still think about the fact that like certain movies here don't get blu-ray releases like the fact that like if i ever want to own anna and the apocalypse on blu-ray like i have to go to buy a uk one it just blows my mind i don't understand that at all I just, I just bought spontaneous and I had to buy it on DVD because right? no Blu-ray. Like, why do you put something out on DVD and not Blu-ray? If yeah. you're going to do a one disc release, pick the Blu-ray one. Yeah. Or do the Blu-ray with like the DVD inside of it. Yeah. You know, I'll take that, but I'm right there with you. I actually wanted to buy spontaneous and I just, I'm like, I refuse to buy this movie on DVD. I respect so, that. Yeah, so I'm just going to wait till like eventually Voodoo will have a digital sale and then the UK will probably give it a really great Blu-ray release over there. And then I'll just probably end up buying that with Anna eventually since I've just been holding out thinking, well, maybe Anna will get a Blu-ray here and we just haven't seen it yet. So I just don't understand. I don't get it at all. I don't either. Um, so I'm curious um, if you were if you were looking back on like who you were in high school, were you more of a Michaela or are you more of a Sadie? Ooh. Uh. Or were you a big Al? <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I was probably more of a Sadie, but a little less put together. Okay. I definitely wasn't as fun as Michaela. No, I wasn't either. Um, I would say you more of a Sadie. I think I was more of a Sadie because I was more into like movies and stuff like that. And yeah, I think I probably was more like her. I definitely so was, wasn't as charming as either of them. No, I definitely wasn't <laughs> as cool as either of them either. I no, I wasn't on cheerleading. That's for goddamn sure. <laughs> so that that was never that was never in the cards for me. So I I was I was one of the kids who was like one of the girls who was like I'm going to challenge the system and we're gonna we're gonna add girls to the boys wrestling team and there was like a whole group of us and then it came down to where I was the last person left. Oh, you were still so cool, though, because you were using your brain. I was just kind of there. Like, I was a nerd. I was in band. I had my group of friends, but, like, there was nothing interesting about me at all. Oh, I, I, I find that so hard to believe. Do were you in regular band or did you do marching band, too? Both. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Clarinet, I used to that marching band. I did not play well, but I played and I did it. Well, it's funny because like I actually took flute um, for a few years before high school. And then when I got to high school, my there one of the pins broke in my flute and my mom refused to like get it fixed. So I had to quit band. Aw, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I had it was one of those where I was like, oh, OK, because it was like it was a couple hundred bucks to fix. Mm. which is so dumb because it was like this tiny little pin I still have the flute too um but yeah so she just she refused to to fix it so I just was like oh okay I, I guess, guess I'm done with band I guess I'm done with band now but I was one of the people who went to the football games uh on Friday nights or sometimes Saturdays during the day because all my friends were in band and I would go there to watch them <laughs> We appreciated you so much. <laughs> so, and I had a bunch of friends who were like in color guard, which is like, or flags sometimes mm -hmm. they're called too. So yeah. So I was on that side of things, but it was weird. Cause like I was thinking about it and you know, it's, it's funny. Cause like when you think of like prototypical high school movies in like the eighties, like there was always like sort of this division between like the jocks and like the rest of the school. And I guess I got really lucky because we didn't really have that a lot, at least in my class. Oh, because really? A lot of our jocks were actually really nice oh, and like we really did. good people. And a lot of them also, their interests crossed over a lot into like choir or theater and stuff like that. We were a very weird anomaly, I think. We had, so <laughs> I went to school in a small town. It was like the equivalent of Friday Night Lights where like the football team was the shit and was worshiped Amazing. by the entire town. And so because of that, the was football Kyle team, Chandler your, your coach? Cause no, our coach I, sucked and he was not nice and he was uh, not inspirational. In and not hot finest. either, probably. Not hot either. Oh, <laughs> such a disappointment. But so because the football team was so like popular, they made it huge. So, so many people could be on it. So we did get a lot of crossover with people who would be in band and in choir and all of that stuff. But like, if you weren't on the football team, you were a second class citizen. Interesting. <laughs> That is so interesting. Yeah, because it was like, I was thinking about, because like even like our baseball team, like there was, again, there was quite a few of them that were like in other groups that I was in as well. And even like our wrestling team and stuff like that. Yeah, so like our, we had a really strange thing because like I was expecting when I got to high school that there would be very much sort of these divisions. Um, but I think actually in a lot of ways, like Michaela and Sadie sort of represent the fact that like, sort of the ideals of like the the us versus them isn't as cut and dry as it used to be because there is sort of like that overlap because like you know they're in cheerleading but they kind of just hate it they're just sort of in it because they have to be yeah it seems like um but they're also on prom committee but then they're also you know aspiring serial killers so there's room for everybody, I think, in, in high school these days. I like that. I hope it's true. <laughs> and I feel like maybe everybody. there's like, because high schoolers grow up on the internet too, like maybe there's more of a space for them to interact together in the, so, in the social media sphere than there is or was when we were going to high school and like you just sat with your friends at lunch and that was it. Yeah. I was also somebody who like, I, I didn't always sit with the same people all the time. 
So I was, I was one of these, like, you know, just depending on where, like, if I needed to catch up with somebody, like I was always kind of moving around. Um, although I was a, a, a glutton for punishment my senior year, I actually uh, didn't have lunch my senior year because I decided I wanted to take extra classes. So, you could do that? Yeah. So they counted my, because uh, we had a class time specifically for our high school newspaper. So they would count Skyline, which was our high school newspaper, as my lunch. So I was, I was just dumb. Like I literally gave myself no time to get anything done. And I worked two jobs my senior year. So I actually, this is really funny to admit that you know, I was like, I was a very smart kid, but I actually almost didn't graduate high school um, because I missed so many gym classes because I would skip gym to go do homework because I was working so much. And I just didn't have time to keep up with all my classes. And I had like two AP classes. I don't know why I did that to myself in senior year, but now you can understand why I'm always so overworked and stressed out. I can't believe after taking on all of that, they still were like, you know what? We need to make her take gym too. Yeah. And it was, and it was, I, I will say though, I had a really, really good gym teacher who she knew I wasn't a bad kid or anything. And she knew I wasn't trying to like ditch out to go like do bad things and so like when she confronted me about it she's like you know Heather like you've missed like 12 classes this quarter and I was like oh oops <laughs> I guess I should have been keep, keeping better track of that and so like she's like I, you know that's a fail like I have to fail you and she's like which if that happens you don't graduate and I was like oh oh and I was like oh my god what am I gonna do and so basically I had to go into school for three weeks and I had to be there at six in the morning to run laps. I, I'm not kidding right now. I was about to ask how many laps do you have to run to make up for missing gym class? I had to run 10 laps. You every actually morning. had to run laps to make up for that. I did. <gasps> and I had to be at school like at six in the morning and I'd have to go do it. And she would be there and, or six 30. That's what it was. It was six 30. Cause it was, it, at that point it was it was just getting to be daylight whenever oh, I would show up at school human. and then but on top of that because I didn't want to tell my mom what was going on so I had to make up these excuses as to why I had to leave for school so early for three weeks straight and I can't believe she bought it I don't even remember what the excuse was but yeah so basically I almost didn't graduate high school because of gym class which is like the dumbest thing ever <laughs> but it's because of gym class because you were working so hard so you didn't fail your other classes. Yeah. It's and the I did, irony. I know, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> and again, I don't know why I was killing myself so hard at, at that age when I'm like, that's all I've done since. I should have enjoyed myself. <laughs> Hindsight's 2020, kids. Enjoy your life while you can, I guess, is the moral of that story. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't turn out to be like me. <laughs> then you really are a tragedy girl just not a cool one you're still the cool one <laughs> trust me you're the cool one <laughs> <laughs> well now that I've worked out all of my high school psychoses and things like that through this episode it's a very therapeutic <laughs> I'm glad this has been so fun <laughs> so I, I guess the best way to say is like to wrap this up is like yes we would like a sequel and a proper soundtrack release so if the universe could get on top of that I would appreciate it I really don't think that's too much to ask. I don't think so either. I really don't. I'm not asking for the moon. I just want, no. I just want a sequel and a good soundtrack. That's all. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so if you're still by any chance listening to me drone on about my high school experiences uh, after all this time, uh, thank you. Thank you for not giving up on this episode. Um, Emily did great. I apparently, my lack of sleep has taken me to some very unexpected locations oops <laughs> sorry um but we do appreciate you tuning into corpse club um, um and we you know we always are appreciative of all the support we've had over the last few years and if you want to learn more about corpse club you can visit us over at corpseclub.com and be sure to follow us on twitter at corpse club and for all of your daily news reviews interviews and fun things like that you can head over to dailydead.com um I, Emily just posted a couple of uh, reviews that got me really excited for some Dark Star f films coming up. We yeah, there's some festival. good stuff happening there. I'm really intrigued about Jumbo. So Jumbo really, really got inside my heart. I oh, highly recommend cool. it. It's so sweet. Oh, I'm so glad you're able to do that. I wanted to, I really wanted to cover it that weekend, but I just had other stuff going on. So I was like, I was like, my girl, Emily's got this and you did. 
I did. You Thank did. you so much. Yeah. So if you want to read Emily's amazing work and mine too, I guess, um, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can find us over at Daily Dead. Um, and then Emily, where can people find you on social media? I'm on Twitter and I'm at Horrorella blog. Wonderful. Um, and I'm over there at the horror chick, but you don't need to follow me. I, I do not yes, you do. talk about just how I'm working and working and Oh, guess what, everybody I'm working again. Um, so there's nothing, nothing fun to see there. So, but Emily is a blast and a delight. Uh, and it's always great to have you on. So thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me, Heather. I love coming and hanging out with you. I love when you come and hang out with me. I know we still have to figure out when you're going to watch vamp. Oh Yeah. So we can we can finally uh, we can finally get that uh, going, and then we can I can I can pick your brain and stuff like that. This is going to be awesome! I'm so excited. I know. So yes. So for all of you listening out there, thank you so much for tuning in once again. Uh, you know, want to dedicate this uh, episode to Dario Arpeggio. Uh, we appreciate all your work, sir. Um, and until next time, everybody, stay scary. Hashtag blessed. Thank mm-hmm. you.